away, please. It's a child that requires an awful lot of attention and teachers fear, well, if I could be sitting next to him all the time, uh, it would be fine. I mean, the, the problem is managing a, a child with ADHD in a class with 29 other children, basically. And we're going to go out into the cloakroom, boys and girls, quietly. This child is not responding in the same way that most other children do to what is generally seen as standard, you know, effective practice. And you're going to get changed, and please remember to keep doing it quietly and to put your clothes in a nice neat pile on the table. OK? Quickly, quickly. Come on, quickly, quickly, quickly. Here at Manor Primary School, Carol Hardwick has a third of her class either statemented or with emotional social behavioural issues. It's very exhausting, but, um, I, you know, the class, you get to know them, you get to know all their issues. The whole class is demanding in different ways. Well, you've got to do, Claudia. You've got to Two of her pupils are diagnosed with ADHD. James also has dyspraxia and dyslexia. Claudia is on the autistic spectrum. We've been friends ever since reception. <laughs> I have hyperactivity and that they just um, hyperactive. Makes... She's got it. Yeah, we she... both got it. We both got uh, ADHD. And... Well, it makes I you go hyper. You know, like... <laughs> Silly. Carol has taught this Year 5 class once before in Year 3 and she has seen some challenging behaviour. In the past, I've had children going under the table, storming out of the room, throwing things in frustration. You can have days when some of the behavioural issues take over. Um, what you have to do is make sure you balance it out because you know, at the end of the day, you've got 30 children in that class. Her experience with them has helped her to formulate a number of strategies that work with all her pupils and keep class disruption to a minimum. I set up a visual timetable for the children so that when they come in, they, you see a lot of the children will come up and look at the, the board and they'll see the, the visual uh, signs. They know how to follow it. The minute you change the format, that throws them, they become insecure and then that's when you have difficulties with their learning. Down here, I've put a little map on the table and we've got literacy groups, maths groups and friendship groups on there so the children can come in and just check because often it's just that security of knowing where they are and what they should be doing. As you can see, um, this is a, dis a display of the children's work but we do it in such a way that it's not confusing. There's another thing with children on the autistic spectrum. They find clutter and things all put too closely together, hard to separate. They'd like to know it as their classroom. If you change it too much, then it's almost like starting a new year again. They've got to get used to where everything is. Yeah. I'm going to take you over to this area, which is an area where um, our children with more particular needs can come and have a, a bit of space, a bit of quiet. So this is the area where they work with their INAs or they work with friends um, away from groups when they need to. I'm going to put your stuff back. The beginning of the day can be quite horrendous if it's not managed. So when they come in in the morning, it's about having the right atmosphere. It's about having it calm. I work on a system where, with my team, we set up activities for them to do as soon as they come in so they know what they're doing. Pupils arrive and immediately open their books and begin to work. OK, does everybody understand what they're supposed to be doing? Yes. What are you stuck on, Finney? What, what's wrong with number two? Next door in the ICT suite, the less able pupils work on phonics. Next one, Claudia. Now I need you to do this Song. Song. Good girl. Had to little working song. Good girl. Keep going, then, Claudia. Go. Song. Good listening, the school is aware that assembly can also be tricky for some of its pupils, so there's a more active jump-ahead session instead. 
I think we've got another three more minutes, then we know when Jump Ahead is finished. Children with ADHD would find assembly time particularly difficult. There's a lot of conversation, a lot of dialogue, which they might find challenging. So because of that, it's more appropriate for them to come and do something which supports them and develop social interaction with a particular group of their peers, which they might not ordinarily have. Back in the classroom, Carol and her team have to be constantly on the lookout for pupils losing focus and going off task. Ah! Right, let's have a look then, James. Who's that? I think so. Yeah. What do you think, James? Likely or unlikely? Yeah, likely. You play rock, scissors. Rock, paper. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, by the way, my breakfast I find with any child that their, their level of concentration, you know, after about 10 minutes, unless you've got a fantastic, you know, all signal dancing session, you lose some of them. We do an awful lot of sending them off the carpet to work in groups and talk to each other. I think you've been sitting on the carpet long enough now. I think you're ready to go off and do some fabulous group work for me. Right, off you go into your groups. OK, right, off you go into your group circles. The planning of that initially is quite hard, but once you get it in place, you tend to use a very similar format for all lessons. Because a number of Carol's class have special needs, she may often have up to four other adults teaching in her class alongside her. It takes a while to establish your team and it's all about communication amongst the team. You have to draw on the experience of your team, you have to draw on people who may have worked with those children before, and then find a way that it fits into your way of teaching. There is one obvious downside to having so many people working in such a confined space. Working as a team, you begin to know when you're making too much noise. Oh, is yeah. it a signal? Yeah. Yeah. You, know. <laughs> you know, when a body language. <laughs> and I, and I think there's lots of noise on that table, you know, where there's a TA working on it. Yeah, there's a little green one that usually grows with grass and it's got a leaf that looks like this and it's got one... There will be plenty of times when a child with ADHD may even use their ADHD as an excuse. The more one gets to know the child as an individual, the more one is able to distinguish between those times when uh, the ADHD is at work and when it, and when it isn't, if you like. Other members of the staff need to learn about that child and mm. then together we create consistent boundaries and you know, ways of dealing with problems with those children and that's the important thing is that we all do the same, the we same. all yeah. say yeah. the same, yeah. we all act the same way with those children. Boundaries have to be set really right at the beginning and it's very hard those first few weeks because it seems as if you are being hard but they actually learn to like those boundaries because they know your expectations. To make it work, I, I feel you have to be very organised and forward planning is important. Um, you have to be flexible that you can drop, you know, at a drop of a hat have a quick meeting. To free up some staff time, the school often uses older pupils to help oversee assembly leaving teachers and their TAs a few precious minutes to catch up and get some planning done. Now, I wanted to talk to you about all about the science that we're planning for this week, which is Earth, Moon, Earth Sun and Moon, and um, really to get your ideas on which is a good way of setting a map for it. You know, just very yeah. simple questions about the Sun and the Moon. Mm -hmm. That will be their concept map. And then when they come into class and start yeah. working with the group, they'll be able to use the ideas that you've given them mm -hmm. when you, you were talking to them to uh, engage with the group more so that they can contribute. We're learning about the planets, you see, on this That's boat. That's right. Claudia. Miss Sergeant Claudia. has been a whole night exploring. Listen, what we're, what we're doing, Claudia, we're um, pre-teaching, so new learning journeys about the planets. This is a programme called Communicate in Print. So you ha have to have the programme on the computer and... As it's, you type in the amazing, words, isn't it? if you typed in camera, it'll come up and it'll just. That's right. It comes up. Symbol. It comes up with the symbols, doesn't it? So that's the diameter. It's the size really, of it. Really. So is it a small <coughs> thing or a no, large it's thing? Like the Earth turns. Boom. It turns then, to the sun, then, then, then to the moon, in the, um, at night. Because of this pre-teaching and with the help of TAs, pupils can remain with the rest of the class whenever possible. Does the Earth go round anywhere? 
Being able to contribute in class does boost confidence levels, but many of these pupils can have issues with low self-esteem. Because their misbehaviour, as, as, as it appears, is, is construed as being volitional, this can have an effect on the child's self-esteem, that the child is being blamed for things that are beyond, beyond his or her control. James, have you earned any reward time today? To help nurture a more positive attitude about themselves and to school life, there is a daily reward system for basic good behaviour. It's also a handy bargaining tool. So do you think you deserve your reward time today? Yes. Yeah. One last question. Did you do your reading? Yeah. Why was that? I was getting annoyed with it sometimes. Right, bargain now, OK? Tomorrow, you must do two lots of reading. Yes? Do we agree? Okay. If you can find a time when you can reward them with the things that they really like, the effort is much, they put much more effort into pleasing you. I think reward time is great because we get to pick something. Yeah. And we have to earn and the reward to, time. And we have to play on Ben 10. For a lesson. On Ben 10. Yeah, that is well good. Look, you're hanging round. You have to really show those children, they are so sensitive. You have to show them how much you like them, spend time talking to them, spend time sharing a book with them, especially at the beginning of the year. You know, just sitting down with them and, and or going out in the playground with them. You see your clerks are playing on the copper guys? Yeah, but they weren't I was going to ask them, should we? Can you find out if you can have a game with them? The children know that the children in the class are different and they, they are very sensitive to the needs of these children. And you would talk to the class about how they can help, you know, the child with special needs. Sometimes it will distract, distract our learning, but they're, they're very nice to have in the class. They always um, teach you something new that you never have learnt before. Um, they can be a little bit silly sometimes, but that's, that's what's good about them. Welcome everyone to our inclusion meeting. The school has a weekly inclusion meeting where members of staff can discuss pupils' needs and troubleshoot when required. Jump ahead group. Yes. Children are then very well known by all the staff and this means potential problems are often curtailed before they occur. Nonetheless, it can't always be plain sailing, and Carol had a particularly bad third term. You have to accept that, you know, you need to ask for help when you need it. Um, and I went and spoke to the head and I spoke to the inclusion manager, and between us we developed some strategies that I could take back into class. Um, we also involved some outside agencies, just really giving us some pointers. And, giving you lots of praise, you know. I think people forget that the teacher also needs to be praised for the success. <laughs> the child with ADHD could be seen as a barometer, if you like, sometimes. So if you get things right for the child with ADHD, you are getting things right for everybody. Having these children in my class just makes you much more aware of your visual teaching, of ways children learn. I mean, I've, I've, I've found the whole experience very enriching. Tiring, but enriching. <laughs>